Do people actually retire when they planned on retiring, when they expected to? I've got some surprising data and the planning implications. That more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. So when do you want to retire? Is that, is that date or that age crystal clear to you? And how, how, how confident are you that that's, that's the date when you're going to be done? Now, I'm in my early 40s, and so I don't know. I you know, I, I don't know, and a lot can happen in the next 20 years or so. So, so yeah, I would say yeah, I have, I, I'm not really sure, have a certain age, mid 60s, and sort of planning for that, but it's probably flexible. And obviously, the age at which you're going to retire plays a big role in, in, uh, in, in how much you should be saving right now. For example, if you wanted to be done, many people, gosh, when they're young, they think, I want to retire at 55. I don't know what it is about 55. I think it's because uh, people just assume each generation has it better than the previous generation. And if, the, if previously people retired in their mid-60s, I'm going to try and do it in my mid-50s. And that's, that's not reality for most people. With finances, even though, even though your standard of living is improving every generation, financially, things aren't necessarily um, because we're living longer and, and so on. And so, but if you were to retire at 55, how much you need to save and what your planning needs to look like, what your sacrifice needs to look like, very different than if you're planning on retiring at 65. Said differently, if you're planning to, re to, to retire at 70, well, that's very different than if you're planning to retire at 60. It, it influences how much you should, you should save and influences your plan. And so I've had sort of this squabble, not a squabble, but uh, one of our co-hosts and one of my very best friends and mentors here at Corhorn Financial Group, Josh Gregory, has often said, as we've done the Wise Money Show for several years now, he's often cited that on average, people retire sooner than what they expect. And I've, I've joked with him and said, show me the data, you don't believe you, that sort of stuff. Well, guys, recently I saw some data from the company Morningstar and they're citing a, a, a survey from NPR and uh, and 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 Harvard that actually sort of gives some visibility into this very issue. Do people actually retire when they planned? Do people actually retire when they expected to? Okay, so as you're approaching retirement, you start getting that vision of, yep, I'm gonna retire at the end of this certain year or when I turn this, when I turn this age and and so how precise, you know, I, how precise would I need to be? Do, would I need to know the exact month or the exact year? No, actually this data is showing, well, if you expected re to retire within this five year range or four or five year range, did you actually do that? Take a look at what the data is saying and it's drawing an overwhelming conclusion. The light blue, that is the percentage of people or like before retirement, so pre-retirement, and when they expected they were to retire. So light blue is, is expectations. I haven't retired yet, but I'm expecting to. So 6% of people before retiring thought they'd retire between 50 and 59. 19% of people expected to retire between 60 and 64. The vast majority, so 42% of people expected to retire between 65 and 69, 15% expect to retire uh, in their 70s, 3% in their 80s, and, and 16 didn't know. So that's the light blue. That's before retirement, this is what I'm expecting, this is what I've been shooting for. Now I don't know, was this survey done when people were in their 20s? I doubt it. Uh, I'm sure it was you know, late 50s or, or something like that, or, or in their 50s, when, when retirement planning is really sort of getting some traction. But in the green, that's what actually, that's when people actually retired. So only 6% of people expected they would retire in their 50s. 29% of people actually did retire in their 50s. That's a lot. That's a lot more than, than if you would have asked me sort of Jay Leno interview style, sidewalk interview. I, I wouldn't have said 29% did. 19% of people expected to retire between 60 and 64. 31% actually did. Let me say that differently. 60% of people retired before 65, whereas 
only 25% of people expected to retire before 65. Are you as surprised at that data as, as I am? Turns out Josh was right, and Josh is always right. He's a genius. But uh, no, I, I really, I didn't poke at him too much because in my professional experience, in our professional experience, our advisors have helped thousands, maybe uh, t you know, tens of thousands of people, help them with their retirement at some point, help them retire. And if you were to ask, hey, do people on average retire when they expected, earlier or later, yeah. I, I think people probably tend to retire a little bit earlier and gosh, this data certainly shows that significantly. So then why? Why? And then we'll get to the planning implications. Well, it certainly could be something positive. It could be that, well, I expected I need to work longer and you know what? I was financially ready. I was financially ready early and I was able to be done. That's possible, seen it happen. Could have, I received some sort of inheritance or financial windfall and yes, I am ready. I am ready sooner than expected. But at least in my experience, and, and I think I think embedded, this is probably more the more common reason people retire earlier, and it is due to a negative thing. A health change for them, for for the for, for you, the for the individual, my health has changed. I'm no longer able to work. A family health change or a family need, I think that's probably the biggest reason. Uh, I had an individual just recently retire because not only are they caring for a grandchild, they're also needing to care for their parents who are now both early onset and can't work anymore. I was planning on working a few more years, about four more years. I, I can't juggle all of this. They're, my family's higher priority than work and I'm gonna need to financially figure this out because I've got to care for them. Or I've seen this a lot that you know, I, my job has changed so much, I'm not able to keep up with it. I thought, and this is more for the people that were expecting to work until their late 60s or 70s. By mid to early 60s, they aren't able to keep up with all the technical and technological changes and, and whatnot. And so, so it could be one of those negative reasons that yeah, I, I thought I'd be able to work until this age and I actually am retiring sooner. And, and the final one that fits into that category is, is, is a layoff or economic downturn or, or a job cuts. And when your job is cut or your hours are reduced or something like that changes late in your career, I see a lot of people that just say, I, I'm, I, it's too late for me to go find another job or find another employer. Who's, who's gonna hire me and will I want to go through that learning curve and I just, I'm just gonna be done. So for whatever the reason, what can, we, what can we extract from this data and apply to our financial lives and our financial planning? And the number one, I would tell you, I've got three takeaways. Number one is to be disciplined in your own financial life so that you are prepared for whatever scenario comes your way. So yes, going back to the old adage of, of yeah, starting to save early or be responsible with how much debt you have. Because if you suddenly need to find yourself retiring sooner and you still, you still have debt or you are using, you are hoping those last few years of your career would help you, you know, wipe out a lot of this debt, what if those last couple of years of your career are cut short, right? So, so being diligent in your own finances so that you remain prepared that if your life changes and your finances need to adapt, that you're in a, as good a position as possible to, in, in order to, to make that shift. Second, and this is a little bit outside the realm of finances, but guys, it overlaps and, and I would work on your health I would work on your health and I would work on staying current and up to date with changes in your field and in, in, in at your company. I, I see it often where, you know, it's not the it, it's not the poor health choices, not exercising or eating or right or, or whatever that impacts you that same day. It's it's not even maybe that next month or the next year. It could be decades down the line, but Eventually, if you have some health complications and you can't work, that's going to influence your, influence your finances. So quality of life and, and focus on your health. And then, yeah, I, I, something, a, a, the vast majority of people get, are very frustrated with the technology that their company uses, that their, that their office uses. And if you're later in your career and that l the most recent technology change or software change is one where you just, I just can't get it. It's so frustrating. Why does it work this way? Why can't it operate like the, the old one? I would encourage you, stay current. 
continue, like get over the hump with that, te with that technology because you never know when the next one's coming and that one might be the one where you say, okay, I, 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 can't, I can't do this anymore or I'm less effective at my job and, 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 and then our, our downsize. So staying current on your health and staying current on, or, or staying, um, staying healthy, focusing on your health and current with your, with your job, that can help with this as well. And then finally, I wouldn't draw the conclusion that you need to, well, I'm planning to retire at 65, so I might as well just build a plan for 63. You could do that, but I feel like there's no, there's no stopping that. Well, then if it's 63, you might as well plan for 62. And if it's 62, you might as well plan for 61. So instead of, I mean, build your plan with, hey, I think I'm gonna retire here, and, and, and so you have clarity, but then I would do the stress testing to see, well, what, it, what would it look like if you needed to be done two years earlier? What sacrifices or adjustments would you need to make? But also having that plan in place, if life does throw you a curveball and you all of a sudden need to be done, you can work with your CFP to update that plan to say, all right, what adjustments and trade-offs do I need to make? So. Surprisingly, data overwhelmingly says people tend to retire sooner than what they planned. The question, what are you planning for and are you ready? Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with kwisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.